Hi, I'm Richard Beck from Beck's Armory, and today we're going to talk a little bit about belt grinder basics. Just a little background um, on myself. I have a small company called Beck's Armory. It's kind of my side gig where I build forges and burners and belt grinders and just random stuff. My day job, I'm a machine designer, so all day long, every day, I get paid to design custom machines and automated systems. So that's what I do. So I have a lot of experience in, you know, complex machines and that kind of stuff. And um, I've learned a lot from everybody over at Home, what is it? Home Built Belt Grinders Facebook page and DIY Belt Grinders page. And they're constantly getting new members. And so that's what inspired me to make this video. Um, because a lot of times, you know, there'll be a new member and they'll say, hey, I knew, and then they ask the question. And it's like, it's usually always the same question or very similar to like a lot of the questions that all the new people ask, which is totally cool. Um, welcome to the belt grinder community. We are happy to have you <laughs> and um, just want to help. And so this is basically kind of like a cop out for me. So I can, instead of typing every single time, all the same answers, um, I'm just going to try to answer some of the questions and then I'll probably post this over there. And if you really want to learn a lot, head on over there and read the comments because there's going to be a lot more people adding questions like, hey, you didn't talk about this, you didn't talk about that, and you'll learn something and I'll learn something. So the first question, how much horsepower do you need? Easy answer, two. Um, can you have less? Yes. Can you have more? Yes. This is three uh, horsepower back here. And the reason I say two is because the bang for your buck factor. Um, if you go with one and a half, you're gonna spend almost the same money as two, except for you're gonna be getting one and a half, you know? So if, if you can spend, you know, $20 more and get two instead of one and a half, you definitely would spend $20 more. If you wanna get a three horsepower motor, you're going from two to three, so it's an entire horsepower gain, but it doesn't come cheap. The price difference between one and two is not near as big as two and three. Now, I went with three because I saved up and I had the extra money to spare, so I went with three. Um, and I'm very, very happy that I went with three. Um, but the VFDs, um, the price increases uh, pretty steep after two horsepower. Um, and if you go to five, you're getting real expensive. Anything over five, you have to have three phase input power. And most people do not have three phase power in their shops. That leads us to the next question. Can I um, run my belt grinder on 120 volts single phase? Absolutely, yes. But if you do that, you can only go up to one and a half horsepower, okay? Um, 120 volt VFDs, only support one and a half horsepower, as far as I know. I could be wrong. Um, if I am, please fill, uh, put some links in the description or in the comments below as to where we can get those. I'm sure people are gonna be curious. Now, if they do exist, they're probably gonna be pretty salty. So, if you only have 120 volts, you don't have 220 volts in your shop or your garage, that might be one reason you go with one and a half instead of two. Other than that, I would always go with two, and I would always go with 220 volts input if you can, and it's more efficient. So we've covered how much horsepower, we've covered input power, but now phases, single phase versus three phase. And a lot of people assume because they have single phase on the wall that they need to buy a single phase motor. Nope. I would highly suggest that you always get a three phase motor and use a VFD. Now, you can get single phase motors and there is VFDs that output single phase and it, it does something with a polar shading, it's inefficient, you don't have low power, low end torque and um, overall it's not gonna you're probably not gonna like it very much because most guys, when they're building their first belt grinder, they run the belts kind of slow at first because they, they, they're they not confident enough to really crank it up. And that in that lower speed, your belt grinder is gonna suck really bad. 
you, it's going to work great if you turn it all the way up. But if you want to run it at half power, 20% power, and you have a single uh, phase output VFD, good luck. You, you're going you're gonna to kick yourself 100 times in frustration. So I'd suggest not to do that. That leads us to money. How much money do I need to build a 2x72 or 2x48 belt grinder? I would say you need between around $700. You might, you might squeak in, you know, just around or just under, but by the time you're probably going to need to add a 220 volt outlet on your wall, and then you head over to Home Depot and you buy the wire, which is expensive. And then, you know, by the time you run that, now you need circuit, now you need fuses. Um, you need something to sit it on. So you build yourself a new workbench. Now you have to buy belts. You're, not, you're gonna want more than just one belt. Belts run between seven and $15 each. You can spend more. I don't you might be able to spend less than seven. I Usually I see them around, you know, $13 for good ones and then you can get cheaper ones. So by the time you buy all the belts, you should probably save up about 800 to get started. Now, if you can't build a legit belt grinder, when I say legitimate 2x72 belt grinder, I'm talking about two horsepower, 5,000 surface feet per minute or more. Um, so five to 7,000 surface feet is really gonna be a sweet spot. If you're gonna build a 2x72 belt grinder with one horsepower and it's gonna run at 2,000 surface feet per minute, you are gonna be so disappointed um, because honestly, there is a Harbor Freight belt grinder that you can buy for $75 that will do what that can do, okay? And, and, I, and it's only $75. So we covered costs, we covered motors, we covered surface feet. 5,000 is what you want, at least. That's what I would say. Now, to get 5,000. Um, there is a calculator that I will put in the description of this video. So if you're watching on Facebook, you have to go to YouTube and look at the description. Um, or you just go to Google and you type in RPM to SFM. Calculator, forever. And it'll bring, there's one of these websites on there, it's like a machinist uh, page for calculating surface, finish, or surface feet per minute for carbine angle or whatever. Anyways, and you just you take your diameter, you take your RPM, you put it in there, and you calculate it, and you say how many surface feet. And if you go to a six inch uh, drive wheel with a 3600 RPM motor, that's about as small as I would go. Um, if you have a two horsepower motor, I wouldn't go to eight. Um, I can bog this three horsepower motor down with an eight inch drive wheel. So if you don't have three horsepower, I would not go with an eight inch drive wheel. If you have two horsepower, I would go with a six or a seven. Um, so unless you have a really high RPM motor, I would not go less than six inches on the drive wheel. Now, it's easy to find the five and the four inch drive wheels, six, seven, eight, I had to make my own. So um, that's a little bit of a challenge. I know they're out there. If you're one of those guys who makes seven and eight inch drive wheels, post your information in the comments below um, so people can find you. So we covered drive wheels. Oh, another, another question people say a lot. Does my tracking wheel need to also be my tension wheel. That's not as often, but I have heard it and the answer is, it doesn't have to be, but it should be. <laughs> I mean, you, I'm not gonna say it has to be because you could be creative and come up with some revolutionary thing that we haven't thought of yet or that somebody else hasn't thought of yet. But yes, typically your tension and your tracking are typically done by the same wheel. Does it have to be? No. Um, then does my tracking wheel need to pivot onto axes? It doesn't have to, but it can. It all depends. Um, does it have to? No. If everything is on the same plane and everything is, all the wheel axes are parallel to each other, you don't need any tracking. But let's be honest, if you're off a half a degree, your belt's not gonna track. And, and very, very seldomly is anybody that perfect and that precise, especially with welded belt grinders. Welding introduces heat, which twists and, and you know, tweaks things and so you typically need some way to compensate for that and the best way is to have a um, tracking wheel that pivots um, some people make it pivot on this axis and twist and that helps them um, go in reverse um, so that's that's one reason you might want you know one that does both axes I just have one axis I don't have any problems um, I find that this bottom wheel down here on the bottom of the platen helps if you if you make sure that that is you know perfect, um, it'll go in reverse without having to you know 
adjust the other axis of their uh, your tension slash tracking wheel. So that's that's that. Then that leads to the do my wheels have to be crowned or can they be flat? And the answer is they can be flat if everything is lined up. Okay. So crowned wheels draw the wheel to the highest point. So that crown in the middle is what that does when it's spinning, it pulls the belt to the highest point. Now, if you have um, four crowned wheels, every wheel fights the other wheel, okay? So it's very, very important that all four be on the exact same plane, um, which let's be honest, none of us get the exact anything, right? So I typically suggest that your platinum wheels are flat and um, your drive wheel is one that you know that that can be helpful to be crowned um, and your tracking wheel I prefer flat just because I don't want to have to crank a ton like when I when I make my my belt track you know I can move you know an eighth to a quarter rotation on my bolt here and it and control the wheel now if I had a dome tracking wheel I might have to do you know three or four full revolutions of this uh, adjuster screw to make my belt move side to side. That's okay. Personal preference, whatever you want to do. Um, so I prefer the uh, these front wheels to be flat. I prefer um, this guy here to be flat, and maybe the mo motor, the drive wheel, um, to be crowned. Honestly, this belt crown right here, all four of them are flat, and it tracks. Perfect forward and reverse. I don't have to adjust when I switch directions. It just tracks So if you build it right and you build it precise, you don't need any crowned wheels, okay? Then we have the welded versus non welded assemblies, so It all depends on the design um, If you're gonna do a welded belt grinder um, It's important that everything is straight <laughs> because when you if you have a top tube you know for your uh your platen and everything and then you have another tube you know for your, your tool rest or whatever when you weld those two together they have to be it'd be great if they were parallel right um and and when you weld your plate on the side if it's not parallel to that top tube that holds the platen and your your platen wheels you're gonna have you're gonna struggle to track so I guess is what I would say is clamp everything to a very flat surface and then tack opposite you know like when you tighten the lug nuts on a car you go here then you go opposite then you go here then you go opposite then you go opposite 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 weld the same way just think of when you're welding just think of Putting the lug nuts on a car okay if you if you tack if you tack in this corner skip over here and tack in that corner then tack in this corner then tack in that corner then when you start to weld do a, a stitch here do a stitch here do a stitch here do a stitch here always alternate your welding don't ever just start at this side of the machine and just weld everything until you get to the other side of the machine you're gonna end up with twisted assemblies and then you're going to need those crown wheels and you're going to need a lot of tracking ability and um, that's my best advice I have for you for welding um, belt grinder assemblies or any assembly for that matter. If you're going to weld, always alternate. Um, keep your heat even, okay? Anytime you heat something on this side, heat that side equally with an equal amount of welding. So that pretty much will help you get a flat uh, welded assembled belt grinder that tracks well. Is there anything else we need to talk about? I can't think of anything right now because um, we've covered. Oh, what if you need plans? You need plans. Uh, you know, you don't want to come up with your own design. Guess what? I've got one for it. at this point in the video when I'm making this video. It's very, very cheap. Um, and it's basically the only reason I charge for it is because I. I've got a lot of money in it and a lot of time and effort invested and it's basically a tip jar. But if you go to my YouTube channel, I've got like 
18 videos showing every single part being made. So you don't have to pay for anything. You can get, you can just watch the videos and I hold the prints up to the screen. You can see them. You can, you can do it for free. You don't have to pay. But if you want to be able to print your own set off, go to BexArmory.com. I'll leave a link to the description below in this video. And if you have any other um, good advice for new belt grinder um, people who are, you know, you know, thinking about, you know, building a belt grinder, you know, by all means, put it uh, in the comments below. Also, I think somebody should make a video just like what I did on treadmill motors because honestly, I don't want to. Yeah, I know there's a ton of people building belt grinders with treadmill motors, and that portion of the market needs more support that I can't provide because I despise DC motors in this application. So I'm not going to give people advice on how to use belt uh, treadmill motors for belt grinders because I think it's a really poor fit and you're, you're not really going to be happy with the results for a whole lot of reasons that I'm not going to get into but if you want to do that more power to you this video really doesn't support that um, because I don't support that but I know there are a lot of people and a really big desire for that so if you're somebody who's played with all those speed controls that you can get off of Amazon you've played with different belt uh, treadmill motors Please make a video like this and put it on there and then every time you know one of those guys you know brand new to the page says hey I got this treadmill motor you know and then they all ask the same questions instead of you having to type every single time you could start with the video and then answer further questions after that anyway that's my plan with this I hope it's been helpful um, if you got anything out of this video and you're watching on YouTube make sure you subscribe to the channel Give me a thumbs up and, and leave your comments in the comment section below. Thank you so much, guys. I will see you next time.